All right, I just went ahead and cut some cracks off of this piece because, well, I need to make something fairly quick, but uh, also a nice looking bowl. This is a piece of black locust. And the reason that I need to make something pretty quick is I found myself running out of time to get something ready for Friday. And the reason is I was asked to make a few things for our church, and I did. One's a little small table, and the others are, well, I'll show you a picture of it. I'm going to go cut the corners off of this piece to make things easier, get a hole for a worm screw. And while I'm doing that, I'll show you what I just made. And I think they look pretty nice, and it's just another... Well, it's just another thing that I like doing besides turning bowls. So, I'll be right back. Here's the little table that I made, but it looks a lot better in place right here in our church. And what it's used for is a place to put things like hand sanitizer. I also made these little crosses that are about three inches tall for our young altar servers. Let's get back to the video. I have it on the worm screw and let me show you why I didn't even consider making this a natural edge bowl. You can see this line right here. Well, I knew that this was going to fall off. It has a tendency to do that. And I wouldn't doubt... Well, this one's on a little better, but it is going to come off. Whether it falls off, well, here. That's going to come off as well. So, that's okay. That just helped me get a shape on here. And like I said, we need to make something fairly quick, but I'm not going to rush myself. I'm just picking something easier to do. All right. Okay, I just sharpened the 5 8 bowl gouge, and I'm just going to start rounding it to get it into balance. We're doing about 700 RPM right now. So, for those of you who are interested in the segmented work, and especially the illusions, I have a couple of those in the works, and I just now sketched this one up. It should be very easy to do, and I look forward to doing it soon. Well, that cuts a lot nicer than I was expecting, but look at the, if you can see that, that is just beautiful, the grain in here. And we may get a couple free cracks with this bowl. I am also hoping to have a decent sized base on here. I need it to be a little bigger for sitting and a few other things. I'll flatten some of this off to see where I'm at. I probably don't need the hail stock support for this. I like to use it at the beginning when it's not round. I really like that a lot. Let's take a little more off. I think I might have one like this and one like that. But I need to stop for a little while and uh, come back and, and decide. But before I do that, I'm going to put some of the Starbond CA glue down in here. And then I'll end up cutting away what sits on the top. I'm going to try this brown Starbond. It's uh, medium thick. Hopefully that crack doesn't go too far, and I don't think it does. I gotta try to get it finished today. Alright, see you soon. Okay, I'm back. I let the CA sit for quite a while. 
I put a mark here for either a recess or a tenon. I think I'm leaning towards a recess on this. I want to clean up this area first and see if I have to do any more work and then I'll make a final decision on what we do here. About 860 RPM now. I think I will leave this like so and I think I'll cut a recess here. I'll switch to a half inch bowl gouge for that. about the right diameter. Let's see if we can square this up with my diamond tool and we'll have to cut a dovetail on it. Alright, this is my little homemade dovetail cutter. That's probably going to work fine. Alright, this is ready to sand and it's fairly smooth. I'm going to start with 100 grit. This crack filled real nice with the CA, so I'm happy with that. I'm going to be sanding with the lathe in reverse around 400 RPM. I'm going to start up my dust collector and we should see a lot of dust going over there. I've got it sanded to 400 and I think it looks great. The grain in here is really cool. Wait till I put some finish on it and you'll really see. So I'm going to use a shellac based sanding sealer. See that? That is nice. I think I'll get two coats of this on and then I'll turn around cut the inside and then I'll uh, do the shellac on the outside same time I'm doing the inside. I just wanted to see what this looked like. I could easily put the sealer on after it's flipped, but this looks nice. There's the crack. It doesn't look too bad. Okay, well that's that's what it looks like, and I do like that spot right here and right there. And this does dip down right here. Alright, I'll see you when I have it flipped around. Okay, I've got it flipped around on the chuck, and this area where I filled the crack with Starbond, I can see that this wood is not very good, so I'm going to take about an eighth inch off of this. We'll start hollowing it out. Got the 5 8 bowl gouge. We're doing 720 RPM.
So when I get close, and this is not real close, but I like to know how much more I have before I get through the bottom, because I want to leave a bottom on it. These work really good, especially on a natural edge turning. Well, this is telling me, and it's, this is a pretty accurate place here, I've got about an inch, but I also have a recess in here, so I have to take into account that I probably have a little over an eighth of an inch on that recess. I also like to use this little setup here. It's just a flat board with a 3 8 hole drilled into it. I have another one with a quarter inch and the dowel keeps breaking. I just haven't gotten around to drill that one out. Because if it, it slides, it's got good friction, but I like to have a set screw on here. So it's just a nut with a wing nut super glued to it. I can tighten it, it will not move. You can put this over here and decide how much you want. Now I know I have, I'm going to say, I'll just say I have 3 16 recess. Take into account, I think I'm going to leave about 3 8 of an inch. You can put this in here and I have just a little under an inch to take off. I'll keep checking with this. We want to make sure we don't cut a hole through the bottom of the bowl. Just a half inch to get that center out of there. We're there. Okay. Sure that didn't move. It's pretty smooth. I do have some ripples in this area here. Use the uh, 5 8 see if we can clean that up. And we'll be ready to sand. So when you get an angle like that, that starts hitting and it keeps me from going across. I've got this gouge ground to a bottom of the bowl gouge. It lets me keep it more like this. I think we did it. Yeah, that is perfect right there. So, people ask all the time, which, what's a good gouge? Well, this is the Benjamin Best. It's a less expensive gouge, but you just saw it make an excellent cut. These are very good gouges for the price, for sure. This is a Robert Sorby gouge. And I've been given a lot of gift cards to Rockler, so that's what I buy. Okay, let's get ready to go ahead and sand this up, and we'll get a finish on it. I'm going to go ahead and sand the inside up, pretty much the same as the outside, except I'll be turning the lathe forward at around 400 RPM. I'll be starting with 80 grit on the inside. It didn't cut quite as smooth as the outside but it's still not bad. Sand up to 400. I'll get the sanding sealer on it and the finish and that'll look exactly like I did on the outside but what I'll do when I come back is since I don't have a tenon to take off I'll show you how I polish this out with abrasive paste.
I put two coats of sandy sealer on the inside and then I put two coats of shellac. I already had sandy sealer on the outside so I put two coats of shellac on it. In between each coat I used the fine scotch bright and buffed it all out while the lathe was spinning. I then put some axe abrasive paste on it and I got a phone call. Well that phone call took longer than I thought so when I came back out I went ahead and just got it buffed out. So I didn't show that but I have a video that shows using the abrasive paste and the polishing paste in a lot more detail. But I will go ahead and show you how I put the polishing paste on. Doesn't take very much. Now, normally, you might want to let that sit for maybe five minutes, but I don't really see too much difference in doing that. But I do like to buff it out with the, my lathe running in reverse. If you don't have reverse, that's okay. I just feel it's more comfortable for me to do it like this. And that is about it. And that looks pretty nice. And it feels real nice. So I don't have a tendon to take off. And I'll be right back and show you what we have. Well, here it is. It is all done. And in the beginning, I said I needed something quick and easy because I was kind of running out of time. And it looks like I'll be able to get this uploaded and you'll be able to watch it, which you're doing right now, of course. It's very pretty wood, so it wasn't just a simple easy one. It's actually a very pretty bowl. I like these areas right here. I think that looks pretty cool. That didn't get turned right there at all, and this one did. So it finished seven and a half inches in diameter. It's three inches tall, and the base is a little over four. That's a piece of paduke. This is one way to dress up a recess. That's not glued in. I'm not sure I'm going to use this or not. I have another idea, and if I decide to do that, I'll show you this bowl in a couple of weeks when I decide what I want to do. I use two coats of Zinsser Seal Coat and two coats of Zinsser Shellac and then I polish it out with X Abrasive Paste and the Polishing Paste and it leaves a really nice finish. And those cracks, they look pretty nice. I filled it with the Brown Star Bond. So I hope you didn't mind seeing some of my other woodworking projects. I used to do a lot of flat work and I was asked to make that table and those little crosses and I'm always happy to do that so I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. If you liked the video you can let me know by hitting that like button. Also leave a comment and tell me what you think. I love reading them all and I do my best to answer them all. If you're currently not subscribed please consider doing so. If you are subscribed thank you very much. I truly appreciate each and every one of you. I do all types of turnings and I love doing them all. Let me know your favorites. Thanks again, and until the next time, see you later.